Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. 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 Welcome, Hobaba Shikia. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another God's Healing Stream worship service. Praise the Lord. Let us pray now. Hallelujah. Father God, Hobaba Shikia. We invite you, Jesus, we invite you. Holy Ghost, we invite you. Be with us today. Speak to us and speak through us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Pour out wisdom, pour out love, pour out strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Baba Bashikia. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Uh, stretch out your mighty hand, your outstretched arm. Touch everyone today, Lord. Hallelujah. On this broadcast, uh, heal bodies that are sick. Uh, strengthen bodies that are weak. Uh, give miracles to those that lead, need miracles. Uh, physical miracles. Uh, financial miracles. Uh, in Chikaramanda, in Jesus' name. Breakthrough for those who need spiritual, emotional breakthrough. Through in Jesus name move Lord move 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 today Lord in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah well welcome today it is a very uh, um, um, important time it's the 29th of September which is uh, sundown today starts on the Jewish calendar the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah and it's a very important time uh, this time this period these next 10 days we are to do deep soul searching look at our life this past season see how it's gone see where we need to make course correction alter things even do things totally different to repent of things that we have sins that we have sinned all of Oshaka cry out for forgiveness and uh, we want to get hold of the Lord that on the day of atonement which is uh, 10 days from now the Lord will hear and the Lord will forgive hallelujah and uh, thoroughly a new season a glorious new season can start for us hallelujah well praise God I just feel that uh, because of uh, uh, the the preparation that uh, we have done here in this house hallelujah 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 and i urge everyone take this time period seriously look in deep within and pray seek god and uh, get wisdom and strength to make what uh, alterations are necessary but i i'm, I'm feeling that the, the, the preparation uh, has been good and uh, we'll we even going to go in uh, deeper and be more thorough and this new season hallelujah this new season is going to be the greatest new season we've ever had hallelujah and i even had a dream uh, a few hours ago, and I'll let you know about that at the end of this uh, service. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, well, soul searching. Uh, what I got, uh, I started uh, uh, with Matthew 5, 8. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So uh, as I was praying this week, it's like, whoa, I, 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 was shut down. I want my heart totally purified. I want my heart clean. I don't want any dirt or deception there. Help me, Jesus. Uh, Psalm 51, verse 6. Uh, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So God wants truth deep in your heart you know uh, as we study the heart we see it's like a, a god showed me years ago it's like an onion with uh, many different compartments many layers so uh something you can feel something uh, uh, or, uh on one layer but then on a deeper layer uh your heart attitude may be different so we want everything to be pure on every level. Hey, hallelujah. Lord, I want my heart pure. Every nook and cranny, every chamber of the heart. 
You know, the psalmist said, unite my heart. He understood that some parts of the heart could war with other parts, and one could part could be uh, diametrically opposite the other part but the psalmist wanted unite my heart every part in sync with you lord yes. hallelujah hallelujah okay uh so how uh god wants truth on the inward parts and jesus said i am the way the truth and the life uh, i am the light of the world whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness so so god's will the will of jesus is uh there not be any deception or uh, dirt in 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 us uh, so the thing is uh okay i got to have truth I got to have truth shining in there so there's no dirt, no deception, no darkness. Uh, hallelujah. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will guide you into all truth. And uh, I said last week, uh, uh, I, I heard this uh, 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 person had uh, prayed 12 to 14 hours a day for three months, a prayer was constantly, Lord, show me truth, show me truth, manifest truth to me. Lord, I want to know truth. Uh, and this was her uh, deepest desire, and it was almost like, almost like her heart was aching. I, I gotta know truth. And at the end of three months, God just came in, and the spirit of truth came into her. And she saw things she never really understood before, because the spirit of truth was shining light into these areas. Okay, so, and also John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth and the tr truth shall make you free, set you free. So it's like, wow, when truth comes in and I know truth by the spirit of knowledge, hallelujah, I'll be free from all deception, free from bondage, ha, hallelujah, free from lies, free from wrong thinking yeah. hallelujah so i want that hallelujah well this week uh, i was praying lord spirit of truth come in spirit of truth come in well i mean i, I didn't pray 14 hours a day for truth but i was praying on and off truth 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 well what happened was uh, i started to uh reflect on past actions things that happened in the past and let me tell you what happened astounding thing happened as i remember things that happened to me the things i did what i did in that situation this time all of a sudden it was like whoa that action was wrong oh my that was not good what i did and I'm, I'm, it's like, whoa, th I never thought of these things in this way before. But it was like God was bringing the spirit of truth into my past actions and attitudes. Things I said, things I thought, and the spirit of truth was highlighting. That is what, exactly what you were saying and thinking, but it's not right. Oh, oh my. And, oh, and I, I started crying out to God, oh, help me, Jesus, help me. But it was like the more I prayed, the more things I saw from the past. And it's like, whoa, I don't want to see any more. I don't want to see any more. <laughs> it's like the more I see, the more I know, the more I see that I was wrong here, wrong there. It's like, what hope is there? Help me, Jesus. And, you know, the Bible says... Uh, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind. So how come we, we can act this way with a foolish mind, a deceived mind? And it's like, wow, we have the mind of Christ. That is our inheritance. But we got to work for it. We got, it's there. You know, this is the uh, paradox, so to speak. It's there. It's already done for you, but you got to work for it. Now, how is that? Well, the work is uh, believe, seek God, seek God, repent, repent, uh, 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 turn away from this action, this thought, go for it, go up higher, pray, 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 read the word, be, be, go get before God. So the thing is, uh, the mind of Christ is there for us if we seek him, we got to seek him. So uh, then I re re read, you know, Romans 12, 2. 
Let me read Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So here's the thing. Got to get your mind transformed, yes. trans uh, renewed. Got to get your mind renewed. And it's like, what happens is the way you think, you got to examine the way you think because, you know, the carnal man, we're carnal and carnal is lazy. And so after a while we have a, a mindset, uh, it's, our minds are more or less set by the time we grow up and this is the way we think. We don't examine it, we just think that way. And then uh, the thing is, because of that, our mind is never renewed. It's just the same old way, thinking the same old things the same old way. And of course, we'll get the same old results. And then we get the results we don't like. Then we complain to God. We complain about circumstances. We complain about life. But the thing is, we got to get our mind renewed. And we've got to seek God, seek God, seek God. We got to pray. We got to repent for wrong things. We got to seek God uh, uh, for strength and uh, new ways, new patterns, develop new patterns, get strength to do things in a new way. Oh, So be not conformed to this world. And that's another thing. You know, why do we think the way we think? And uh, most commonly, it's because this is how we've been influenced by the world. You know, you're growing up, uh, uh, you're a, a, a young person, adolescent, you're so influenced by friends. Friends are the main thing. You got to have friends, got to have friends. You got to be part of the crowd. And, and, and But by the way, this is one of the things that is uh, uh, causing the suicide rate among young people is astounding now. It's one of the big problems in many pl communities. And the thing is, it's the, 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 the kids, they, they form groups. And then if you're not, you've got to strive to be part of that group. And if you're not part of the group, you feel rejection. And then you go on the social media. They see a new hairstyle and everyone gets that. You, your hairstyle is not able to get into that hairstyle. And then you feel rejected. And, you know, the thing is, kids get so depressed, they, they commit suicide. This is astounding, but it just goes to show uh, peer group pressure, how our thinking is formed by our associations. So I, I, uh, so I, I, I remember what Paul said, Galatians 6.14, Galatians 6.14, you know, uh, Romans 12.2 says, be not conformed to this world. Don't let your mind be influenced by this world and conform to this world. Uh, get your mind renewed in Christ. Uh, don't be conformed to this world. Well, let, that led me to Galatians 6.14. 6.14, the words of Paul. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. So amazing thing for Paul the world was crucified to him. Paul was the great apostle. He was able to tap into deep things of God and love the deep things of God because the world had become, he had made the world crucified to him. Uh, in other words, there was nothing in the world that attracted him. He's in the world, but not of the world. Praise God. Praise God. So nothing in the world attracted him. And, you know, I, I start to think about this. Uh, if we want to get deeper in God, be like Christ. You know, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, the devil's coming, but he has nothing in me. Ho, ho, shaka. Because there was nothing in Jesus uh, hooked to the world that the, the devil could get to him. This thing, you love this thing. Ah, this is how I attack you. But there was nothing uh, in the world that attracted Jesus to the world. Hallelujah. He was in the world, but not of the world. He was in the world just to save us. But there was nothing in the world that he was attracted to because heaven was much greater. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I was thinking about Enoch. Enoch. 
He's right in the beginning of the Bible. What is it? Chapter 5. There's not even any Bible written then. And Enoch walked with God. How could this man walk with God? He didn't have the apostles and the prophets before him to teach him. He didn't have the Bible, the scriptures. And the Bible says he walked with God. And then he was God because God loved him. He was close to God, and God just took him out of this world. Oh, shakarabasiya. Hallelujah. How could Enoch do that? Well, it must have been, and it only could be, there was nothing that attracted him in this world to keep him attached to this world. Hallelujah. And, and so God looked out, Enoch, I see you're living in this world, but there's nothing that you enjoy from the world. Let me take you to heaven. <laughs> Wow, Enoch, Enoch, wow. He was, the world was crucified to him. Nothing kept him tied to this world. And Paul said, the world is crucified to me. Wow, hallelujah. And so I was thinking, if I want to, you know, go higher in God, hallelujah. You know, God is looking for uh, uh, his people to become saints in light. And I'll get to that more later on. But, uh, you know, saints in light, the, like Jesus, just full of light, radiating light. Poo shaka. That when the world looks at us, they'll see God in us and want that God that's in us. Hallelujah. Yes. But how do we get to that point? And it was like, wow, uh, the, the Holy Spirit be dealing with me. Got to crucify the world has to be crucified to me. Wow. And, and then I started to think of the things that I'm attached to. And you know, the things that you're attached to, those become your idols. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Yes. People that you love, you know, political heroes, entertainment heroes, sports heroes, you know, those things you make idols, you, 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 you become attack, attracted to them. You think about them, idolize them, get joy out of it. You know, oh, God, I'm she God, I'm see, God, I'm help us, Lord, help us, Lord, help us, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'll tell you one thing. If, just to make an illustration of this, uh, what it means to be attracted to the world. And, and, and uh, One thing I love was uh, the horse secretary, and, and I would watch that race. <laughs> the Belmont Stakes where he, he just... Uh, I mean, he he won that race by 32 horse lengths. It was the most amazing race. And I just watched that so many times, so many times. But it's like, wait a minute, don't idolize that horse. God put a special heart in that horse. It was God who made the horse that way. <laughs> But it's just an example of how easy it is to form idols in the world, you know? I make idols out of things in the world. And it's like, whoa, whoa, I got to get my mind higher. Look to the, not to the blessed thing, but the blesser. God is the blesser. The secretary was the blessed uh, 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 creation, but God is the blesser. Love God, love God. Hallelujah. And so, you know, I start thinking, Wow, I got to crucify the world to me. I got to uh, cut this thing, cut that thing, cut that thing. And I started to think, you know, more and more and more. Okay, what if I'm able to crucify everything in the world that has me attracted to it? So there's nothing left. What then? What then? I'm living and there's nothing in the world that gives me any enjoyment. <laughs> you know, that reminds me when I was in Buddhism. <laughs> I used to meditate, just sit cross-legged, face the wall, watch my breath, helping to get enlightenment. And uh, so I, I went to the Zen Buddhist master then. I was in Japan, you know. I said, hey, hey man. Huh? And, and, and I said, what if I spend my whole life I'm, 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 I'm meditating to get enlightenment and uh, I, 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 I don't choose not to get married. I give up on that. Don't find a wife to love, but I just stay in the monastery, pray and meditate, meditate to get enlightenment. And what if I don't get enlightenment? <laughs> No enlightenment, no wife. <laughs> what kind of life? <laughs> 
and he, he looked at me, he laughed, and he said, of course there's no guarantee what your journey you're on. It's like getting on a wooden raft and trying to cross the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I said, thank you, master. <laughs> But, yeah, so, you know, I'm thinking now I'm a Christian. What if I get the world crucified to me? You know, nothing attracts me. No joy from the world. And I don't become like Paul. I don't get, I don't become a saint of light, full of light like Jesus. If I don't make it, then what? <laughs> I started to feel sorry for myself. <laughs> that was uh, the devil has so many ways to trick, <laughs> trip you up. <laughs> I started to feel sorry. Woe is me! I'm gonna crucify the world to myself, and I might not make it in Christ. <laughs> what the? <heck? laughs> but the Bible has the answer. Seek and you shall find. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open. <laughs> and the Bible says, what is it? Isaiah 49, 23. Anyone that waits in God will not be ashamed, will not be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. Okay, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so here's the thing. This common season can be the greatest of your life. Uh, you, you make the preparation now, these uh, next 10 days and soul search and yes, Lord, oh, that was wrong. I repent, I repent. But not just repent, but cry out to God to cut the iniquity. So not just repent of the sin, but the root of it, cut the iniquity so I don't do this thing again. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Okay, hallelujah. So cutting out the things of the world, one thing after another, cut, cut, cut. Okay, what is left? It's not, you, the only, there's only one direction. It's to Jesus Christ, to Jesus Christ. Get the things cut of the world to get closer to Jesus and finally in Jesus. Romans 8.29, Romans 8.29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So our destiny, God has predestinated us with the uh, 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 destiny to be conform just like Jesus. That is our destiny. Yeah. After all is said and done, you know, you say, well, I'm called to be a prophet to the nations. I'm called to be an actress. I'm called to be a great sinner. Fine, fine, fine. But even beyond that, once you get into that, keep going. And it's to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, to be like Jesus Christ. So you can be a singer, but a Jesus Christ singer. You know, a, a, an author, a Jesus Christ author. So the, the, the thing is to be conformed to Jesus. So the thing is, uh, how do I do this? Uh, Spirit of truth, help me, help me. And it's like God is love. You know, what is Jesus like? God is love. Jesus is love. The son is like the father. And the father is love. Jesus is love. Wow. So after all the, the, the soul searching, yeah, I come to the conclusion the world has to be crucified to me. I have to give these things up. This idol has to go. That idol has to go out, out, out this new season. Oh, Lord, I cry out, give me strength, give me strength at the iniquity level. Hallelujah. So I have strength to move away from that iniquity. And then it's move into what I got was 1 Corinthians 13. God is love. Jesus is love. So I want to read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. I'll start off in the King James uh, 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 one through three. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, 
It profits me nothing. Wow. Okay, now I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, chapter, verse 4 in the New Living Translation. It's a lot easier to understand. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Wow, there we go with truth again. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Wow, wow, wow. So it's like that is the nature of Jesus. Uh, this is uh, what, I, what God has destined me for. That is my destiny. He wants me to move, it in, move into it. But I, I got to reach out and work my way toward this. Hallelujah. How? Prayer, prayer. Crying out to God for strength. Uh, keeping the word in front of me. Uh, letting my life be guided by the word. Hallelujah. And so the thing that uh, of all these, these are uh, uh, so many powerful uh, things uh, in uh, starting from verse four to seven. And what I got, one thing that stood out as love does not demand its way. Wow. Wow. Love does not demand its way. It doesn't seek its own. And I saw like, uh, you know, one of the things I'm telling you the truth in ministry is, uh, you know, you look for open doors and you're always looking for something, an opportunity, a door open where you can go forth. And after a while, it's like there's a spirit that can come into you where it's like you're looking for your own looking for your own, looking for your own, looking for uh, your own way, uh, looking for yourself uh, to be uh, 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 in the limelight. And it's like, whoa, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Oh, Katabasia, may this thing die out. Cut, cut, cut at the root, Lord. Papa, she Sandarabasia. Lord, I don't want this anymore. It's distasteful. It's ugly. Help me, help it. I repent of it for uh, these attitudes uh, in the past, but now, Lord, you know, as, as the Lord showed me, it's, it's one thing to repent of a sin, but then you've got to cry out for the strength, the strength not to repeat that sin, to strength to get this thing cut at the iniquity level, at the root level. So it's like, wow, repentance, if all it took was repentance, that's wonderful, but the, the, if the iniquity is there, you're gonna do that thing again. Mm -hmm. And then you do it again, then you're gonna have to repent again, and then it be becomes a never-ending cycle. But the thing is, the Lord showed me, repent and then cry out for strength, not to repeat that at the iniquity level. So cry, repent and cry out for strength, not to repeat that thing again. Oh, no, Shika. And that, you know, it's like some, some, some of these iniquities are so deep rooted that, uh, you, you know, you'll, it'll be easy to repeat that thing again. And so it's going to take prayer, mighty prayer, deep prayer, consistent prayer. Hallelujah. And I, start, I started to think just to get the spirit of truth. This lady prayed 12 to 14 hours a day for three months, truth, 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 truth. She wanted it that bad. But the thing is, uh, we got to want to uh, be like Christ so bad. This iniquity, I know this thing is in me. It, 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 I got to get it out. Got to cut, cut, cut. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, you shall have power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I pray, 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 pray more in the Spirit. And you know, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, one thing I realized about myself, you know, um, we, we are products of, 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 of our uh, parents. And, you know, someone said, you're a product of four 
four strands. Uh, your mother and father, that's two. But your father had mother and father. And your mother had mother and father. So from, from your mother and father, there's four beyond that. Four ancestors beyond that, and you're the product of that. And so, you know, my parents I, I came to America from a, a communist country, and it was like survival mode. They didn't know this language. They had to survive and, and make it, you know, and they raised us up, you know. It wasn't easy, you know. And so the, the, one of the things that developed is, you know, it's just just survival survival mode just look out for yourself just you just got to make it you just got to make it <laughs> and and it's like wait jesus said the two greatest uh uh most important uh commandments love the lord your god with all your heart mind soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself well i could love god but you know it's like how do you love everybody God, but that's not natural. Uh, well, not for me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's not natural for me. And the Lord said, okay, you start, it's like, wow. When you meet people, see people on the street, just everyone you see, just, Lord bless them. Lord bless her. Lord bless her. Lord bless them. Everyone you see, as soon as you see them, just say, bless them. Wow. Hallelujah. Even if you don't really care about them, just pray it. At least that's a start. And so the thing is, it's not natural, for, 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 at least for me, to love everyone. I'm telling you the truth. But the Lord says, just take it one step at a time. But at least desire to get on that road. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Satan. You know, if you just think about it in the carnal, it's like, whoa, how can you do that? How can you love everybody? You know, love your neighbor as yourself. It's not natural, you know. It's a hard way to go, you know. And, you know, when I was this week praying and saw the Lord was showing me past actions and that, that, that thing I did there was wrong and that attitude was wrong. It was like, whoa, forget it. You know, what hope is there? You know, and I, 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 even this morning I, I got up, I was thinking, whoa, help, help me, Jesus, help me, Father. You know, I, I, I look at, I was seeing all these things. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and it's like, you never see yourself that way until you really do some soul searching because if we're carnal we be uh, our heart will be hardened and then when the holy ghost tries to convict us we don't re we don't detect that conviction we're not sensitive to it we don't feel that conviction you know the disciples were with jesus three and a half years 24 7 and even with that jesus had to rebuke him what is your heart hardened I'm telling you, you know, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And they're thinking we didn't bring any bread. Jesus is upset with us because we didn't bring any bread. You know, and she said, what have your, has your heart been hardened? And so what I'm saying is like, wow, you know, it's easy to get your heart hardened. And so when you do some wrong things and the Holy Ghost tries to convict you, you don't feel that conviction. You don't hear it. You know, you're not sensitive to it because your heart is hardened. So it's like, wow, the Rosh Hashanah season, the days of awe, you know, the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and right uh, Yom, Kipp uh, Yom Kippur, you know, those are days of awe. Those are important days. Uh, what you do there can set the tone for the coming season. So we want to get it right, really make good preparation. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing soul searching. I'm saying, whoa, that was wrong. What I did, that was wrong. That was wrong. That was wrong. It's like, whoa, help me. And I, I started to think, I don't even be, deserve to be saved. What hope is there? I mean, it's, it's, uh, the more I see, the more I, wow, wow. It's like, Holy Ghost, don't even, <laughs> please don't show me any more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, you know, I started thinking, what hope is there? And I started to get really, like, despondent, you know. And But thank God, there's a scripture. Here's, look, look, John 14, 26. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. 
whatever I have said to you. So one thing is the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance. He will stir up your memory, have you remember some things. So while I was thinking, what hope is there? You know, I, it's like, I don't even deserve to be saved, you know? And all of a sudden I started thinking, but what about Jesus? What about all the people that didn't ask for his grace? And my mind started to remember, oh, the impotent man in John 5. He, Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? He didn't even say anything to Jesus about that. He said, I, I ain't got nobody to help me. You know, he was in such deep self-pity. And man seeking, looking at man, and Jesus healed him anyway. Wow. He didn't, the man didn't ask for any help. Jesus helped him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What about the woman caught in adultery? She was about, she was about to be stoned. And Jesus came and chased the stoners away. <laughs> she didn't even ask for his help. And he saved her life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And yes. the, the man that was born blind, he was born blind, and Jesus came, I'm going to do something to show the glory of God. <laughs> oh, God. Heal that man that was born blind. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What about the widow of Nain? She's weeping and weeping. Her husband's died. Now her son has died. The son who is working and supporting her. And he's died. And she's weeping. And Jesus comes along. She didn't even ask to Jesus anything. She didn't even talk to him. And Jesus says, stop weeping. <laughs> and he raised up her son from the dead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. If Jesus could help those that didn't even ask him for his help. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just uh, excuse me for being a little uh, emotional. <laughs> but that is good news. That is good news. Yes. People didn't even ask for his help. And Jesus helped them. Even yes. saved their life. Wow. Praise God. There's hope for me. <laughs> praise God. Well, the Lord show me. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wasn't even thinking about this, but the Holy Ghost stirred up things that I had heard Jesus say or heard Jesus write in the book, in the New Testament. Wow. Praise the Lord. So I got hope now. Hope, hope. Hallelujah. Well, I'm on the right track. I feel I'm on the right track. Keep the, the soul searching. Hallelujah. And humble yourself and repent, repent. But then cry out for strength, strength, not to repeat this stuff. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Well, I got up at, you know, I was up at uh, uh, five o'clock today. You know, I started to pray. And you know, I'm I'm tired and what naturally will happen, you'll be praying <laughs> after two, three hours you'll fall asleep. <laughs> Well, I fell asleep while I was praying. I don't know, maybe after two hours, after three hours, you know. And uh, uh, when I woke up, it was like, wow, I had a very funny dream. But, you know, here's the thing. It was a dream in this dream, um, in the closet, looking at the closet. And uh, it was like my wife, was, someone was just throwing, taking out the clothes out of the closet and throwing them on the, the chair. And it was like, oh, we're going to move. And that's why we got to get the clothes out and start to, we're going to have to move. And But I, what I noticed on the chair was the two heavy winter coats. That stu stuck out of my mind on the chair. Two heavy winter coats. And I looked at the closet. The closet was empty. So I'm thinking, well, it's got to move. And that, that, that's all I thought about it. Then, you know, as I woke up more, I started to pray again. But a while later, it must have been an hour or two hours later, I was, I was praying. It's like all of a sudden, I began to understand the dream. What is this dream about? The dream was uh, the closet is being emptied because God wants to give me new clothes. <laughs> And the moving is not necessarily moving to a new house. It's moving to a new place in God, a higher level in God. Amen. Praise God. And those heavy winter coats, it's like the Spirit was showing me, you won't need those clothes. It's too heavy in the new realm that you're going. Wow, wow. <laughs> Whoa, praise the Lord. 
So the Lord will show me he's going to give me new clothes. You won't need those old heavy clothes of the past. Hallelujah. And you're going to a new level and empty out the closet. Could cause God's going to bring, bring in new clothes for you. New anointings. You got Praise yeah. God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. New garments. Uh, garments. Uh, uh, prophetic garments, uh, praise garments, uh, holy garments, uh, love garments. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Well, all I can say is this is just the start of the new year. Imagine this. T the full 10 days are ahead of us. Seek God. Seek God. S pray, pray, pray. Do soul searching. Soul searching. Repent, repent, repent. Uh, and then cry out, cry out for new strength. Uh, new strength that you never had before to cut out these iniquities. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Cry out for truth. <laughs> praise God. And if you do that, this coming season is going to be the greatest season of your life. Hallelujah. As I said, the dream, the Lord showed me this is going to be a new season for you with new clothes. Ha <laughs> ha, shut up. <laughs> and he's going to take us. Well, I know for myself and my wife, <laughs> Shaka, he's going to take us to a higher level, a level we've never been before. Praise God. Why? We're taking this season so important, so important. Uh, uh, this 10 days of awe. Hallelujah. Don't uh, take it lightly. Do, do utmost effort. Seek God, seek God, seek God. Hallelujah. I want to prepare for the new season. I want to fix up the things I didn't do right in the old season so I can enter into a new season, uh, make a fresh new start. Hallelujah. And have it to be the best season of my life ever. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm going to call my wife. Uh, hallelujah. Honey, we're going to a higher place. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, shaka. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> oh, my. Well, God is good. Let me make way for my dear wife. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. It's now or never. If we need change, if we need a new beginnings, Hallelujah. You feel that you have been stuck in the old and you need something new. Hallelujah. 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 It's a spiritual battle first. Amen. So it's time for us to enter into the season of awe starting today Amen. there's 10 days of repentance before Amen. the lord 10 days of soul see searching Amen. soul seeking Amen. seeking after the lord show me show me show me Amen. that i may repent lord god and move me into this new season Amen. that you have before us lord Amen. god Hallelujah. At the beginning of this new year. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want all that God has for us. Amen? Amen. So I would encourage you, if you didn't hear this message, that you go back on it. We'll be posting it right now once we're through. Uh, listen to this message again. That the Lord will guide you from uh, those 10 days of awe, those 10 Amen. days of repentance starting today until October 9th. That, that you would be in a place where you can actually hear from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord will, the spirit of truth will reveal Amen. the tr truth within us, truth about Amen. our own selves that will help us to repent and move forward. And the Lord will take uh, root out, root out, root out the all within us so that Amen. we can move into this new, the new season and the good things that he has for us. Amen. This is so encouraging. Hallelujah. We're so excited about this season and we hope that you can get in on this too. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to take us to higher heights, Amen. greater places of understanding and wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, strategies. Amen. Hallelujah. To move us into higher things. Amen. So I would encourage you to, um, to look into this and do it. Do it. Even 10 days of fasting and prayer. 
Hallelujah. Take it, take it seriously. Take it seriously. Yeah. This is a this is a, a moment of, of a great move of yes. God uh, for each and every one of us individually. Yeah. Amen. A great, turnaround. a great turnaround. A great turnaround is about to happen yes. for us. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, uh, review this message, take notes, apply yourself from today until October 9th. This is the 10 days of all. So let's move into Amen. it and get all that God has for us for this new year. In Jesus' Amen. name, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and release his shalom. Amen. Shalom for us to fast and pray and seek him. Hallelujah. Like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That our days will be like, like heaven on earth in this hour. This new year coming. 2020. 2020 Amen. vision. That we may have eyes to see with the 2020 vision during this new year. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Love, 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 love. Hallelujah. Togetherness, fellowship. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, church. Bye-bye. Uh, bless you, friends. Bless you, family. <laughs> bless you, Facebook friends. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye -bye. Amen.